Can we make a better beer than better beer? <laughs> Let's find out. Welcome back brewers and beer lovers to Flying World Bat TV. I'm McKelty and this is the channel all about beer, banter and bloody good times. So, is this beer going to be better than better beer? We don't know yet. The you know future McKelty and the cold opener does, but for right now, we're going to tell you about what we're going to be making and all we need for this grain bill is 4.1 kilos, which is I think 8 pounds, thumbs up if I'm right, of, um, of Pilsner malt. So we're just using Barrett Burston's Australian Pilsner malt. Pretty good quality, it's going to give us a nice clean dry finish and now we just need to get to crushing. Have I put the bucket under there bro? Yeah I have, okay. Let's go. Before I forget, we have now finally launched our website. It is live. So you can find it over at theflyingwombat.com.au and over there you can find a bunch of awesome merch like the stuff that we're wearing right here. So we've got a whole bunch of different hoodies, shirts, beanies, hats, all available for you guys now in a whole variety of different colors, sizes, all that kind of jazz, as well as all of our calculators for calculating strike water temperatures, for calculating uh, gravities, for hydrometer corrections, all that type of stuff and our massive, massive recipe library that is growing every single time we make one of these videos. So head over there, do check it out, and if you do have any questions or you wanna know, drop us some feedback, leave a comment down below. Let's get into mashing. So we have got our 4.1 kilos of crushed grain just over here. Let's eventually open it up. There we are. So if you wanna get a nice, smexy shot of that. Mmm, smells really nutty, this one. That's interesting. Mm. Really, really nutty, this pills the malt. Oh, how am I gonna do this? All right, there we go. Um, so, as I say in a lot of these videos, strike temperature, you normally set a few degrees higher than your actual desired mash temperature. Reason for that being, the grains are carrying their own temperature. Um, so when you throw them in, it's gonna cool down the hot water. Fortunately for you guys, we have built a calculator for exactly this situation. So if you jump over to theflyingwombat.com.au, you can uh, jump over to calculators and then calculate your own strike temperature based on you know, your ambient temperature, the temperature of your grains and your desired mashing temperature. The reason you wanna do this is because if you're on a system where you don't have the ability to keep heating up your wort, uh, you're basically just gonna miss your desired temperature range. If you're on a system like this, it's still useful because you're improving the efficiency. Instead of, say, having this set at the desired temperature that you wanna mash in at, and then having it drop down and needing to reheat it, you can just have it at the right temperature from the very beginning of the mash. So, helps with consistency. Anyway, up to you guys if you wanna use it. It's over on the website if you wanna check it out. What we're doing right here is just mashing in all of these grains. So, as I always say, throw in a bit of grain, give it a good mix up, throw in a bit more grain, give it another good mix up. Just helps you avoid dough balls. So, if you're new to brewing, basically means when you got a clump of grains, the outside's wet, the inside's dry, you lose efficiency and you don't get as much sugar out of it as you should have. So yeah, 64 degrees Celsius mash temperature. That should really help kick this thing along to be a really, really dry finish and be really, really fermentable so that we have pretty much next to no residual sugars at the end of this brew day. I want the only calories to be coming out of this to be from the alcohol. I don't really want any calories to be coming from carbohydrates, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I've got a couple of calculators that I've been playing around with that I'm thinking about using for this, and that should give us a pretty clear indicator without you know, doing laboratory tests about how much carbs is actually left in this beer as an end result. It's now time to talk about the secret weapon. So this is glucoamylase. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's an enzyme which chops up already fermentable sugars into way, way, way more fermentable sugars. Mm -hmm. But basically, we're gonna be using this because we want this to ferment out super dry. So, I'm gonna be using 10 mils of this stuff, which is overkill, but I wanna give this every fighting chance of being a low to zero carb beer. Um, I got this from Beer Co. over here in Australia. Awesome, awesome dude runs the place called Dermot. Cracker guy, like so full of information, so willing and ready to help you out. So if you ever have an issue with any of this stuff, you can just give him a bell and he's got so much advice to share. And uh, he's got some really, really awesome products at a really, really good rate. So that is about 10 mils there, I've marked it previously. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw this in 
and then give this whole thing a good little mix up to spread that enzyme throughout the whole mash. Then we'll have the recirculating pump, you know, moving all the wort and everything, so it'll be fine anyway, but I do like to give it a good little mix up after I use it. Um, don't use 10 mils just because I've said 10 mils, by the way. Every enzyme is different, so have a look at the bottle or if you're using powdered enzymes, have a look at the manufacturer instructions. Some of them will need more, some of them might need a lot less, and they all work at different temperature ranges. This one in particular works very well at 64 degrees Celsius, so that's what I'm gonna run with, but you might be using one that works at a totally different temperature range. So just make sure if you're going for like a low carb beer like this, that you find an enzyme that works on the lower temperature side because you wanna be activating beta amylase as well. So something that operates between 63 degrees to say 65 degrees is kind of your Goldilocks zone. Alrighty, so as I mentioned, 64 degrees Celsius, one hour, start your clocks. I'm putting my top filter on so I can keep recirculating this thing. You don't need it. If you don't have it, don't stress. I have one, so I'm going to use it. And that's pretty much it. We'll let this thing do its thing for one hour and then we'll come back at the end of that to get to sparging. Mashing is now done. So it's time to stop the pump. I'm gonna move this thing over here. Actually, I'm gonna take this whole thing off because this just gets in the way now. Let's get rid of that. Boom, whack yourself over there. Time to take this lid off and see what we are working with. I need this pretty, thing. It looks pretty clear. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is, which is good. If it's this clear already, it should be a super clear lager. So let's lift this up nice and gently so when it disrupts that grain bed. Nice and easy. Get on the things. Oh, damn it. Anyway, we're gonna let this drain out now and we need to start sparging. So this is draining nice and quick, which is awesome. Um, we're gonna sparge with 17 liters of water at 80 degrees Celsius. So kind of, you know, same as always, if you've got a, like a fancy sparge system where you can sprinkle it over the top at a consistent rate, do that. Normally I'll do that, but the vessel I use to do that is this one right here, which we have a beer in, so that's not an option. So I'm literally just gonna use like a, um, uh, a bucket, you know, jug thing like this and slowly sprinkle the water over top until I've done 17 liters of water, let that all drain out and then we can get to boiling. So let's get started with the sparging, shall we? Again, just sprinkle this stuff over on top. Keep rinsing and repeating until you've gone through your whole 17 liters of water. After that, I'm gonna take a little gravity reading and we'll see what kind of sugar we're working with for this one. Here's a really frustrating thing about brewing. When you want low gravity, you for some reason end up with high gravity. When you want high gravity, <laughs> you're never as efficient as you wanna be. What has happened here is that we have ended up with an extremely efficient mash. So with the 17 liters of sparge water, we're sitting at a gravity of about 1.041, which is too high because I want this to ferment out dry or as close to as possible. That was looking like a 5% beer, potentially slightly over, um, which is not really what I wanted for a sessionable low carb lager. So we've added another four liters of sparge water that brings this up to 21 liters total of sparge water. Now let's take a quick gravity reading and see where we're actually at. It looks like, by the way, we are at a total wort level right now of 35 liters. So we're actually gonna end up with too much wort for our fermenter, which is a 30 liter fermenter. So we're probably gonna have to sacrifice some of this. <laughs> to the gods. <laughs> I'm already sacrificing some of that to the gods. Yeah, um, yeah we'll, we'll probably have to sacrifice some of this and just not add it to the fermenter. It, what? Stop squirting, it is what it is. <laughs> This liquid's very hot, which is, I think, why that's causing a squirt there. Okay, we're at boiling, but I just want to quickly see this to see where we are actually at. Okay, we are at, ah, oh, much better. 1.035, excellent. Okay, after boiling, we will probably end up at about 1.038. One, yeah, about that level, which would give us like a 4.6% lager if we ferment out dry. So that's much, much closer to what I actually wanted. I am happy with that. All right, let's get to the hopping, shall we? So we have got five grams of Pride of Ringwood hops. We're going for a classic low carb Australian lager. So there is no hop better to use for bittering than this. This is the, the classic flavor of Australian lagers. Pretty much every, um, every Australian lager that's existed, commercially speaking, like the big commercial big boys, uses Pride of Ringwood hops. So we may as well do the same because we want that authentic twang of, you know, the land down under. So five grams to start the boil of 
Pride of Ringwood. I'm going to turn one of these elements off. It does not need to be that aggressive. Let's turn off that one. Okay, start your timers, one hour of boil. Then we will come back at 55 minutes from now where we add the next addition. So um, I'm, I am going to add as well at the 15 minute mark, a little bit of whirl flock. Not worth really recording that, but at 15 minutes left in the boil, add uh, 0.75 grams of granulated whirl flock or one whirl flock tablet, up to you, whichever you're using. That's not really essential, but it does help with clarity and we're going for a lager, so we do want to clear it up as much as possible. In any case, we will be back in 55 minutes where we add our flavor and aroma hops right before flame out. So we will see you then. We are now at the 15, no, sorry, the five minute mark left in the boil. So it's time to add our hops. In this case, we are going 15 grams each of Galaxy, Pride of Ringwood and Topaz. So the idea here is that the, oh, I'll just throw these in while I talk. <laughs> so the idea behind the hops here is that the Pride of Ringwood is gonna add this, it adds a level of fruitiness, but it kind of adds this spiciness, almost herbal character. Then the Galaxy and the Topaz are both adding a punch of citrus and tropical fruit flavors. So it should be this nice, interesting balance between earthy spice and uh, you know uh, fresh, zesty fruitiness, which makes Australian lagers just so, so smashable. Anyway, uh, after this has been in here for five more minutes, we're gonna go flame out. We're gonna get this down to yeast pitching temperature, and then we can start fermenting. So we'll see you for that in a second. Flame out, it has now been a full hour. Hit the flame buttons off, turn your pump on, start cooling this thing down. We're using the counterflow chiller for this one here today. Use whatever you got available to you. Get this thing down as cold as possible because we're gonna be pitching lager yeast. So ideally, get it just below 20 degrees Celsius if you can. If not, get as close down as possible before you throw that lager yeast in because it is much, much more delicate than ale yeast. So you really wanna pitch cold for this one. In any case, we'll come back once this is down at yeast pitching temperature. We are now down to yeast pitching temperature. So this is coming out of the counterflow chiller at about 19 degrees Celsius, which is fine for pitching temperature for this lager yeast. We are gonna be using Saf Lager W34 slash 70. Typically I use the S23. It produces on paper more uh, fruity esters, which I prefer generally speaking when I'm brewing beer, but there's two reasons I'm gonna be using this one. One, this has a slightly higher temperature range. This one can ferment up to 18 degrees Celsius. And considering I don't have any cooling uh, chiller coil on this particular fermenter, I am gonna err on the side of caution and go with a yeast that's capable of fermenting a little bit hotter. Second reason is because this yeast supposedly ferments cleaner than the S23 version. So this one um, is probably closer to what you'd want with a classic Australian lager, just really clean, really crisp finish. That's probably what is gonna be the better option in this particular case, considering that's the kind of beer that we're going for with this one. So we're gonna go with one packet, which is 11 and a half grams. We're just gonna throw it straight into the fermenter. We haven't done a yeast starter. We haven't done one on the channel in a while. We will do one soon, I promise. But we're gonna transfer this over. So this finished at a gravity of 1.039. If we do ferment out completely dry down to one, this is gonna be a 5% beer. So. Now I'm a little bit torn because I want this to ferment dry, but I also didn't want the alcohol to be that high. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. I hope that it does ferment dry because that is the goal. It's meant to be a low carb beer, but we'll find out at the end of this. In any case, we're gonna whack this in. We are also going to pressure ferment because this is capable of doing that. Just in case the fermentation gets a bit hot, I want to protect ourselves from any off flavors by fermenting under pressure. When you ferment under pressure, it allows you to ferment a little bit hotter. We can do a whole nother video talking about all of that stuff later, but I'm gonna ferment this at 10 PSI and I'm gonna try and keep that temperature as close to 18 degrees or underneath if possible. The cooler the better for this particular yeast because we want this to be a nice, clean, crisp finish. One last thing that we're just gonna pop in here in the post edit is I am gonna use gelatin to help clarify this thing and clear it all up before racking it into the keg. So I will use about a teaspoon and dissolve it in, you know, like half a cup of water sort of thing, stir it really well, make sure it's fully dissolved. I'm gonna dump that in when fermentation is fully finished. So this fermentation will take a while because it's a lager. So I suspect at around the two week mark, fermentation will be done. I'm gonna pop that gelatin in. It's just gonna help all of the trub, all of the, the haze and the sediment floating around inside the liquid drop right down to the bottom. 
and that's gonna mean it's a really, really, really clear lager when it's coming out of the tap. So you don't have to do it, it's optional. I'm gonna do it because I want it to be super, super clear. Probably lager for two weeks. So it will ferment for two weeks, then I'll put it in the keg. And then really, you know, you can lager it for as long as you want. If I was having it in the stainless steel tank over here, I probably would let it sit in the tank for a month. So two weeks of fermentation and then two weeks just sitting there cold crashed. But I don't have control over the temperature of this thing. So I may as well just put it in the keg. So I guess it will lager for as long as we're patient enough to not drink it. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> not long. <laughs> In any case, once this is finished transferring, we should end up with about 27 litres of wort. Um, and then the next time you guys see us is, I suppose, when we're actually drinking this, because there's no dry hopping with this one. So uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. Any questions, as always, drop them down below. Leave any comments, questions, all that kind of stuff. Future beers you guys might want us to brew. And uh, as always, thanks for um, you know sticking along for the ride. Brew on, guys. Cheers.